So now we're going to consider Raphael uh, the mature artist. So the artist who essentially blossoms into the great master who's going to be called to Rome eventually. Um, and so we're going to think about his, his pl places he went and who he met along the way and, and the influence they had on him. He's drawn to Florence probably because his master, Pietro Perugino, was drawn to Florence. This is from Vasari's life of Perugino. He says, so Pietro would often, at, often used to ask of those he knew to have traveled the world, whereabouts were the best masters of that calling of painting? And particularly he asked this of his master, who always replied to the same effect, namely that in Florence more than anywhere else appeared men who were perfect in all the arts, and especially in painting, because in that city, people are spurred on by three things. First is the sharp criticism so often expressed by so many people, as the heir of Florence breeds naturally free spirits not generally content with mediocre works, but always considering them more in respect of the good and the beautiful than with regard to those who made them. Next, if anyone wishes to live there, he needs to be industrious. And the third spur, surely no less effective than the others, is a lust for glory and honor, which the very heir of Florence generates in those of every profession, and which, if they are persons of spirit, will not let them simply be the equals of those they see to be men like themselves, let alone lag behind, although they acknowledge them as masters. What Vasari is talking about there in that last point is uh, the idea of emulation. So you might often hear the word emulation used as an erudite substitute for imitation, but er emulation actually means rivaling by imitation, trying to outdo somebody else by doing the same thing they do, but doing it better. And it's that mode of emulation that Raphael practices and is really his, his great secret to apprehending the, the, the character, the style, the qualities of works of other artists and making them his own. So he's moving around when he's 20. He goes to Siena, Rome, Florence. He's uh, probably in Rome at the consecration of Julius II as Pope in 1503. Um, at 21, though, he really settles himself in, in Florence or bases himself in Florence, although he is moving back and forth to Siena. And in Siena, he is essentially a subcontractor to the painter known as Pinturicchio or the rich painter. And it, uh, with Pinturicchio, he works in the Piccolomini Library that's attached to the cathedral in Siena. He's, he's hired by Pinturicchio to produce the cartoons or the full-size drawings for the frescoes, but he also contributes to the frescoes themselves, at least in one of the panels. So a grand public commission, um, spectacularly still beautifully preserved today, and they look like you know, illuminated manuscript illustrations. But he's also making paintings of his own, his original works, uh, and especially some of his most famous Madonnas and, and, and Child. And they are very much influenced by the work of Leonardo, who's in Florence at that time. And Raphael's paintings are influenced by Leonardo, but his drawing style very much is influenced by Leonardo. This is his drawing for the Madonna of the Goldfinch here on the right. And it's a, it's a, a painting that um, is, is in the Uffizi. And, but the drawing is, is his generative idea for the painting, and it's, like I said, very much in the, in the manner of Leonardo da Vinci. So he's, he's meeting Leonardo and encountering Leonardo's works in Florence. He's also meeting Michelangelo and encountering Michelangelo's works. And um, this is another drawing on the right, uh, a painting that's uh, known as the Belle Jardinière because it's at the Louvre. And so it's become essentially a French painting. We see Raphael himself there on the left at, at this time in his early 20s. Um, another painting and another drawing very much influenced by Leonardo da Vinci. And, and it's really in that manner of drawing like someone else that Raphael apprehends their style. He doesn't actually make, as far as we're aware, copies of other artist paintings at this point in his life. He, he kind of culls from what he sees of their painting and, and sort of absorbs it in his, into his own painting, but he's really apprehending their, their manner of their style through the medium of drawing. And it's really with Michelangelo that his, his art makes a kind of quantum leap. He is in Florence, comes to Florence um, just after the David by Michelangelo is finished and when it's being installed in front of the Palazzo Vecchio. And he makes this drawing. This is me copying his drawing on my iPad. So you can see the, the drawing sort of in action. But the drawing that he will produce after Michelangelo's David uh, is, is, is both a drawing, an accurate drawing of the sculpture 
but it's also drawn, and this is it, drawn in Michelangelo's manner. So he's apprehending Michelangelo's drawing style in pen and ink that is a, a style that uses hatching to describe form and to convey shade and shadow. And, and in the course of apprehending Michelangelo's work, he really makes it his own. And Michelangelo will eventually accuse him of actually stealing his style. And Raphael was a great um, uh, assimilator of other artists' styles, but he always folded them into something that was uniquely his own. And he does that in many ways through the, primarily through the medium of drawing. 